So guys, we need a new brand name for our product. Um, we should call it, um, Kited Bus Wing. That's almost perfect, but it's not marketable. It really needs to sound real flashy, creative, and inspirational. It must catch the people's attention. Well, people are starting to like those trams. Let's call it trackless trams. Huh? That's not my intro. Who's been messing with my editing software? True Believers is back, and today he's going to talk about trackless trams. Trackless trams are also known as Autonomous Rail Rapid Transit. It's basically an improved version of a guided busway that uses sensors into the road surface to allow for more frequent services and to enable to detect vehicles with optical guidance. This technology allows these new lanes to be flexible to allow road traffic on it during accidents. It also uses traction technology, smooth surface and route alignment to make for a more comfortable ride, and a titanium battery to allow them to be wireless, but it does have less capacity than an average light rail system. The CRRC, which is a major train manufacturer in China, developed a test track in Zhujiao in June 2017. Note, this is the same company that's manufacturing Melbourne's new high-capacity trains. While its appearance looks like a light rail vehicle, it definitely acts very much alike to an average bus rapid transit system. While this system isn't as redundant as other failed Chinese transit schemes, such as the Strandling Bus, it has many flaws that are overlooked by the media and transport experts. It's nice that public transit is getting attention for a change, but for the wrong reasons. It's like the media accepts this without being critical about the disadvantages of it, instead boasting just by the benefits. Like Hyperloop, the media hype ruins ability for people to think and get caught fooled by these stunts. So what makes trackless trams better than light rail? Well obviously it's cheaper because there's a lack of railways to put in and electric wires. But also there's the cost of batteries and hydraulics. So that, that means there's extra cost as well. So is it really cheaper? Light rail is generally better because it's using technology that's well established and is already a great form of transit in itself. And it doesn't really have too much disadvantages to be honest. Even though the trackless tram likes to be known as revolutionary technology, that's not really the case actually. Many of the features are already present in modern busways and light rail, such as the guiding system, which isn't a quite a new concept. The most common guiding system we have is like the like the ones in, in Adelaide, the Oban system, which has been running since the 1980s. While adding a sensor to the road allows these trams to divert when there's traffic jams, this has a large impact on the network because they don't have a full right of way on their track. Light rail generally has full or mostly right of way. This means that the trams don't need to divert around obstacles as much. Light rail also has a superior capacity it can be expanded upon very easily. The only effective use of trackless trams is in smaller cities, where capacity isn't too big of an issue, and it's more flexible to change routes, and can save money if the network is quite small to begin with. If these factors are not at play, light rail is much more superior in terms of capacity, development opportunity, and attractiveness of having a faster, direct, and reliable mode of transit. You have a service that's more permanent and less likely to change, which suits very developed and large cities. In conclusion, while I didn't hate on this type of transit, it's been done before, and there are serious constraints on such a network, and its uses are very limited. 
It falls into the same category as monorails, but that's another conversation for another day. Ooh, what's this? Hmm, that's a prototype for the trackless tram. This particular model looks like a normal bus, doesn't it? Well, guess what? They changed the design. Sorry I haven't uploaded very recently, but if you subscribe today and click on the notifications, I will upload every single day. So that would mean 365 videos a year.